Enjoy your meeting. Just a reminder, today's meeting is being recorded. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. This is uh, David Blake with the uh, Tuesday Tech Talk. And uh, last week, you know, we had a little bit of problems with the re recording, so um, I'm going to touch base on some of the things that we uh, talked about uh, originally last week, and then we'll get into uh, uh, what's, what's, what we're looking at that the, the shows the sector rotation and where we believe that uh, you know the money's going right now, where you may want to lighten up and and maybe uh, put in some new money. Uh, if you're new to the uh, uh, tech talk, we usually talk about 20, 25 minutes, and we try to open it up for some questions. You can ask about individual stocks or sectors or industry uh, targets or anything on your mind, and then we'll, um, we'll try to wrap it up. Uh, try to keep it under 30, 35 minutes. So I don't want to waste anybody's time. Uh, so I'll try to move through some of the things that we did last week, but we did have a couple of people email in that they'd like, like us to touch base since the, uh, again on that, since the recording wasn't available. Okay, um, first thing what we'd like to do is we, we generally we touch base on what happened last week, the positives and the negatives. Um, as you know, last week we, uh, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 uh, broke out to new record highs. We had solid economic data that showed the economy on firmer footing. Um, June retail sales were up about 6.6%. June industrial production was also up about 0.6%. Uh, earnings were coming in a little bit better than lowered expectations, but we're still on track to probably to record a, a fifth straight quarter of negative results. However, what uh, traders and investors want to listen for is um, whether or not we, we think we can uh, get back into positive territory on revenues. Uh, as early as next quarter, the third quarter, and uh, see what kind of jump we'll have in the fourth quarter going forward. Uh, the momentum index uh, ended last week at a bullish plus eight. The CTI was still a bullish plus five. The sentiment index that we follow is, was uh, a neutral zero, so not too hot, not too cold, what, what the guys are looking at. Uh, last week's rally was led by materials, industrials, financials, and energy. And we saw uh, some profit taking going on in the uh, defensive sectors, uh, as utilities and consumer staples were pretty much the only sectors that didn't, uh, that weren't able to uh, finish to the upside. We also saw a nice move uh, in the Dow Jones Transportation Index. We talk about that weekly and how that's been a laggard and how we'd like to see that kind of catch up a little bit. Uh, we'd like to trade above 8,100 would be positive. Last week we saw the Dow Jones Transports uh, jump about 3.9%. That was on railroads and, and airlines, so it was a good move. Was, that was nice to see. Uh, the strongest industries last week were retailers' apparel, and auto manufacturing, and semiconductors. And uh, the relative strength leaders uh, were coal, semiconductors, heavy construction, and diversified mining. Uh, we still have our – we said last week our targets for the Dow was uh, 18,620, 2,200 for the S&P 500, and 5,200 for the DASDAQ. So um, – Here's, here's the first chart we're going to look at is the uh, Dow Jones. You can see over here where we uh, broke above this little trend line going back here into uh, the, the spring of this year. Uh, we are overbought uh, by several projections. Over here you can see the 30-day uh, stochastic is overbought by around 98 or something like that. We had a big jump in the RSI. Um, when a stock or an index is breaking out, however, you can throw the stochastic to come out the window because what it actually does is rather than confirm it's overbought, it's actually confirming that the trend is strong. And that's what we have here. When, and I use the 30-day stochastic for, for or looking at that. When it crosses above 50, I consider it the, the trend is strong. We also had uh, a, a nice move in the ADXR. We've talked about this in the past where if we get a uh, the, the signal line underneath both the, uh, the, the positive and negative uh, directional lines, that's usually a, a, a signal that uh, when you see that turn up, that's usually a signal that the uh, uh, market index or stock is going to have a pretty substantial move. As you can see, we got that back in here, and, and we did get that breakout to the upside. We also talked last week that we were looking at a little bit of uh, negative divergence on the 14-day RSI. I wanted to see that get above 60 or 65, and we certainly got that on the breakout last week. So that, that uh, eliminates that. Uh, one thing that some technicians were talking about that we didn't have the uh, uh, confirmation of volume, but volume you know does does confirm price movement, but the price uh, itself is the ultimate indicator. So I'm not too worried about that at this stage. 
Okay, now here's the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Weekly chart. And what's, what is important down here is the uh, MACD long term. A lot of people, technicians especially will look at this to give us a buy signal for the and when they want to be in and when they want to be out of the market. Uh, the, the MACD long term I look at is a weekly uh, time period. So we'll look at 38 and 78 with an 18 week signal. Uh, if you uh, if you follow that, you know, this got you out of the market basically last uh, last at the end of last May. Has kept you on the sidelines through all this up and down movement over here, and just got you back in here right before Brexit uh, at the top of the April thing. So that's something to kind of watch the if you look at a weekly chart for confirmation of what's going on in the daily daily progress of the different indexes. Okay, what else we also want to look at? Um, this is the for confirmation of a move higher. This is the NYSE advanced decline line, which you can get off the home page on the Market Edge site. Uh, obviously, this is going straight up, nice 45 degree angle. This is confirming that uh, a, a lot of stocks are being under, are under accumulation in this thing. Now, that last fall, we had some diversion, on, negative divergence on this. When you had the FANG stocks that were, were leading the market up to the November, December highs, that's not the case this time. We're seeing uh, the NYC advanced decline line break out to an all-time high, and that, again, is a confirmation that uh, we probably are, are heading higher uh, on the different indexes. Now, another thing we want to look at, we want to look at the uh, NYC new highs and new lows. We can see some expansion in these, um, which also confirms the back up. Uh, we are seeing some up and down movement as that, which is it's just, it's just typical of that. But uh, the fact that we went above 400 stocks is, is, a, is a big positive. Um, last time, uh, you know, th th this will show uh, leadership, but it also shows uh, will, will top out ahead of a market. Like last last year around March, that was the last time we had uh, over 400 new highs in the NYSC, and in a, in a day, and uh, we reached that la one day last week. Now this thing topped out last March at around 400, and by the time the Dow Jones made a new high in, in May, this was back down around 125 or so. So. When you start to see some negative divergence in that, you want to pay attention, and this will usually top out, you know, way before the uh, uh, the market does. So again, you have a confirming indicator and a number of stocks making new highs and lows. Okay, next we have the uh, uh, S&P 500. Again, it's a little bit overbought on this by several measures. One of them uh, that we follow is the number of stocks above the 50-day moving average. Uh, I think for today we're right around 90% of the stocks are above the 90-day 90, 90 or 50-day moving average. Generally, anything over about 75% is considered by technicians that the market's overbought. But again, the uh, stochastic on this, the 30-day, is confirming the moves higher. Our 14-day RSI is overbought, but breaking out to new highs, which confirms that move. And again, you have the ADXR signal on that, which is which is bullish. Okay, over here the uh, here's the weekly uh, uh, S and P 500. You can see all this time over here how this thing has bounced off of this uh, 2100, 2120 area. Uh, when you have a chart like this, the, the number of times that a, a, a chart or uh, index or stock bounces off that resistance line is always a plus. That means that the, that adds significance to when you actually do break out of that. Uh, I, I, now that we've broken up here above 2150, 2166, uh, if we do have some pullback, this 2120 area, 2115, uh, now becomes support. And I would think if we have a little bit of a, a bump in the in, in the indexes or in the market, uh, that would be the place where you'd look to find uh, support uh, with the broader market. And also, we want to see the MACD long term again is confirming the breakout uh, down here. Okay, as far as the NASDAQ goes, um, you know, we broke a long-term uh, descending trend line here in the last week or so. Uh, it's going sideways there, but we did get the 14-day RSI confirming the breakout, showing that we're overbought. We got the, the buy signal down here on the ADXR. Um, that's also the volume was, has also been pretty good for the uh, NASDAQ. No problem with that. Uh, the AD line, uh, again, is confirming that we're getting a nice participation uh, in, of stocks while we had this breakout. Last fall, um, when FANG stocks were, were the main leaders, uh, we, this, this was actually going sideways to down uh, when, when we were, uh, I, mean, I mean, not last fall, but in, in the April uh, uh, time period, last, last November and December. So 
So uh, this again is confirming this is the highest that it's been in uh, uh, since last uh, May, I believe. So that's another co confirmation that the breakouts for real. And you're also seeing the expansion in the Nasdaq new highs and new lows over here. Uh, in fact, uh, let's see. Yeah, we had about 125 uh, new highs on that. No, we had almost two, over over 200, which was the first time in quite a while that we've had that many new highs and new lows. Another thing that confirms the uh, breakout in the NASDAQ is we also have the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index uh, broke out to a new 52-week high. Um, that's that's all. That's very also bullish for the uh, NASDAQ. You know, it's a tech-heavy weighted uh, index, and we want to see that uh, uh, you know the, the semiconductors lead. Now, this is kind of an interesting uh, chart here. This is going back to the, to the uh, bubble back in 2000, and uh, sometimes when we talk about Fibonacci retracement levels, uh, for this sell-off back in 2000 to the low in the semiconductor back in 2008. We've had we've now retraced 50 percent of that uh, 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 that move down in the, in the in the semiconductor index. If we can break above seven, say 760 or so, you might get another another pretty good pretty good move in this thing. I'm not I don't have a target on this, but, but that would be very bullish to take out that 50 percent retracement level uh, for the semiconductors. Okay, last we want to look uh, real quickly at the Dow Jones Transportation Index. Uh, we had a, a run over here last week of about 4%. You can see we have a couple of descending trend lines on that. If we can, we broke above this this, this one over here. Uh, if we can take out this 81 and change, 81.50 area, that was the uh, old April high. Again, that'll be very bullish and could see a run on the on the uh, transports up to around 8,400 or, or even higher than that. We also have confirmation of the different indicators uh, for the transports too. So. All of that is bullish. Um, what, what, as we talked last week, we want to know what could uh, uh, put, put a, a, a cramp in this thing. And some of the, uh, before I touch base on that, I want to talk about some of the other indicators that I look at as far as measuring whether a breakout in an index is for real. Uh, one of them that we keep track of is the percentage of stocks that are within 1% of a new high. Uh, as of yesterday's close, 25-26% uh, of the stocks we're within that 1.1% 1. Uh, 1 of the new high. That's the highest that's been since April of 2015. So that's bullish. Uh, the percent of stocks within 1% uh, of a new 52-week low is down to 7%. So you have uh, that. That's bullish also. That's that's confirming that that everything's being lifted uh, with the rising tide. You know, also bullish is the uh, advancing volume versus declining volume. Last week we had a couple days that. Uh, that uh, advancing volume made up 90% of the day's action. That's very bullish on a breakout. Uh, if we were at a new high and uh, say over, in, let's say over here or something like this, if you had a 90% day over here, that would, that would actually be a little bit bearish. After the trend is in place and you get a big breakout, like a big top like that, it's actually a selling climax uh, when you have a 90% day. But uh, as you're breaking out, it's very bullish for the. Uh, for the market. The other uh, indexes that uh, sometimes we watch for in our momentum index is, are the other indexes outperforming the Dow Jones. Okay, as of the uh, close yesterday, the Dow is up 6.3 percent off of the uh, May lows, which uh, the low, May low was 17,435. Um, are, are they outperforming? Yes, we have the, the S&P 500 is up 6.17 uh, percent, so that's bullish. Amex is up 5.96. Uh, just underneath the, the Dow Jones, NASDAQ is up seven and a quarter. Russell 2000 is up over 10 percent. The AD line is up over seven, and uh, the Dow Jones utilities are up over 12 percent. So, um, the, the fact that the other indexes are outperforming the Dow Jones is another uh, uh, confirmation sign that momentum behind the market points to higher prices. Okay, now what, to wrap this up, uh, as far as the breakout goes. Uh, the chart here that we have up right now is the uh, is UUP. It's the uh, ETF for the dollar. As you can see over here, this is when uh, they, they raise rates, which will affirm the dollar. If the dollar gets too hot, too hot, you can you can see uh, that it's it, it's going to slow down the market. That was where the market tops back here in, in December. Um, then we started to move back and forth a little bit of filling. Uh, when well, we got to the point where we decided that uh, back in March where you know, the rate, the rate hikes off the table. The dollar weakened against other currencies. 
But now, uh, as some of the economic data is starting to fill in and some of the other uh, economies are, are moving their rates down to zero, we're seeing a pickup in the dollar. And in fact, today the dollar is at, at 25.12. So we, we, we have, we're right there at the 200 day moving average. You want to keep an eye on that. Uh, if, we, if, we, if the dollar gets too strong, that certainly will slow the uh, uh, advance in the market. So we can stay right around this 20, under 25 and a quarter or so. Uh, we should be fine with that. But uh, above that, uh, it's going to be trouble. And why is that important? Uh, the, strong, the dollar gets too strong. It's going to hurt price of commodities. It also will hurt the emerging markets. That, that's good. that slows our growth. It also hurts uh, industrials that get a lot of uh, their uh, earnings from overseas. They'll throw in currency risks, that type of thing. So um, to today, in fact, we see that the uh, uh, industrial sector is one of the weaker weaker uh, industries. That, that's not a, uh, a coincidence. That's part of that's because the dollar is stronger. The industrials are down you know, almost a half a percent, and then you have the materials, which uh, also are affected by stronger dollar, down almost uh, three quarters of a percent. Okay. Another thing we want to watch is is the uh, 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 here's the I, uh, TLT, which is a 20-year Treasury. Again, as you can see, when we're not talking about uh, interest rates aren't going to be going up, this is price. The higher this goes up, the lower the yield. Uh, when you saw where the yield got down to a, a, a multi-year low uh, a week, about a week and a half ago, we backed off of that, bounced down here to support, where I think the 30-year the, the yield is back to, the 10-year yield is back to about 1.56, something like that. So you want to see how this goes. Um, I, I, if, if this thing starts to break down, which I don't think it's going to, that would that was that would be due to uh, maybe some some more uh, stronger economic uh, data. But I think we're fine. It can come down in this area, and, and, and it will be fine. The other thing you want to also watch in here is the price of uh, crude oil. We're uh, battling that $45 uh, a barrel range. I, I think we're the market will be fine. It could be uh, supportive of higher prices if we trade between 40 and 45. If we get back above, back below $40, um, it, that would probably uh, cause the market to trade sideways for a little while. And we have to, uh, I think traders would be concerned about global uh, uh, growth slowing down and stuff again. So that, that's, what, that's what we're kind of looking at right now to, to, uh, to look at this uh, breakout. It looks for real. Um, you know, again, we can come back down and test this, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, 12, 20, 20 area or so in the S&P 500. But I think we'll probably see see prices work their way a little bit uh, from here. Now, um, what, what is telling us that uh, we're actually seeing a rotation in, in price? All right, first of all, we want to, you want to take a look at the VIX. The VIX coming down here. This is this is quite a drop uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, a falling VIX can can be good and, and bad. Number one, it may it might mean that uh, uh, there's a little bit too much complacency in the uh, market after a pretty good move or a pretty good trend. But, what, but when you're just starting to break out and it's coming down, that means that uh, traders are looking more. That they're not, not not as anxious about the market, and they're not looking so much for safety and safety and yield. They're looking more for uh, to, to rotate into more of the uh, growth sectors. And we'll go over where you may want to put some more money into that. Uh, as far as defensive sectors go, um, what we're looking at over here is the utility sector. That's the ultimate uh, safety. It's uh, outperformed the uh, S&P 500. This year we're up 23% uh, year to date, and, it, and it's very it's expensive. Uh, we've, we've, the uh, uh, the up down ratio over here has gone from uh, probably about one and a quarter back in April. Uh, we're falling back down here again. Oh, not down here. I'm sorry, on the relative strength, back down around one. So it's almost it's beginning to start to underperform the S&P 500 here. Um, you can start seeing we started seeing some accumulation, which is the up down ratio. Uh, we see the smart charts when it's going up. That means stocks are in accumulation. Uh, this is where we're, they were talking about uh, no more rate hikes for quite a while. Once we got some better uh, uh, economic data and, and this rotation in, into, uh, into the growth area, you started seeing some of the selling. When this thing starts coming down, that means that the, the utilities are under distribution. Now, if you are along the utilities, I don't think that you, know, you know, go out and you start selling them because uh, as long as the rates are this low, I don't, I don't see that big of a pullback in, in utilities, but I, but I probably wouldn't be putting new money in there, even if I'm looking for yield. I think you can uh, find some other places. Um, okay, well, I 
Oh, one second here. I gotta find my paper. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll go into get my. Uh, I've lost a page on my printout. Okay. The other other consumer uh, staple sectors, another defensive sector. Again, you can see this thing breaking out the new 52-week highs. Um, nice accumulation all the way through here. Again, this is an expensive uh, sector. I wouldn't necessarily be putting new money into the consumer staples, but it does offer you a nice yield and uh, and, and slow growth. Uh, it's starting down here on the uh, relative 50-day relative strength. It's beginning to underperform uh, the uh, the S&P 500. If you own that, I would probably still hold on to these. However, I don't think this is an area that you want to put uh, new money to. Also, mainly because the uh, you know, the, the, the P on the, some of these stocks is up in the 24, 25 area, and normally they're going to trade at about a 12 or 13. So if you own these, I would hold on to them until uh, you start seeing bumps up in, in the yields. Okay, now industrial sector that we talked about earlier with the, that has been strong, uh, you, you do get a, a break. You know, you've got to break out again to the new 52-week highs. Uh, you have what we were talking about uh, back here at the beginning of the year, uh, that uh, we, we may have to begin to raise rates. You saw down here the uh, distribution in the, in, in the industrials because they thought rates would be rising. Uh, that would uh, the dollar would rise. That would uh, cause some currency risk. But now the rates came down low here. Uh, we're, we're seeing a takeoff in the industrials again. However, uh, you keep your eye on the uh, uh, keep keep your eye on the uh, dollar as far as what what can happen with. Uh, you know, with, 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 with the industrials. If the dollar breaks out and starts getting, getting too high, that'll put a uh, damper on this. Okay, lastly over here, we want to look at health care. Sometimes we consider that a, uh, a defensive sector. It's had a nice breakout over here. A uh, couple of things with the health care. Uh, one of the main problems is, is the, uh, as, long, as long as they keep talking about wanting to lower prices on drugs, it's going to keep a little bit of a top on this. But as you can see over here, the relative strength is starting to pick up. You're starting to see some more accumulation over here. I think part of that I should have should have had the chart on here is because you're seeing some buying again in the uh, biotech stocks. Uh, they, they've had they had quite a pullback of over they had over 20 or some percent. You're starting to see people nibble away at the biotechs. Uh, if you if you don't own any biotechs, I think the amazing discoveries that they have all every year. Um, uh, you, you need to have some biotechs in there, but uh, you get a nice yield with the, with the healthcare, especially in the big drug companies. That's why it's considered defensive, but uh, I think you can put put money, uh, new money to work in that also. Okay, uh, the energy sector, we just talked about the crude oil prices. You're seeing sideways movement in this. Uh, that's a little bit of stabilization. You're staying above the 50-day moving average, which is which is good. The XLE, uh, again, you want to keep your eye on uh, the 40 to $45 range on crude oil. If it breaks below 40, uh, you'll probably start to see this. Uh, come down and right, right over here while this is stabilizing you can see the uh, up down ratio showing distribution all along here which is this is not a sign of strength so once thing this thing starts to prices go down you'll st you could see this thing break down uh, where do I want to put new money well materials uh, have outperformed we're, uh, we're up probably 18 percent or so year to date a lot of that is this run in here we saw gold and silver Outperform when people were nervous, a little bit nervous about the about the, uh, the market, and also when you saw the the dollar falling down, you saw some uh, uh, you saw the accumulation of the commodities. Some of the commodities are up, uh, you know, uh, 15 to 18 percent this year. Also, you usually don't get a uh, a move like that in commodities, so uh, they may be getting a little bit toppy. But we did have a break in on here again. This could be part of, partially due to uh, gold, which to me, if if we're if we're getting a rotation into Stronger, uh, uh, more growth sectors. Uh, gold may top out at this, this 1350 area, 1360 area. Uh, you can want to kind of watch that. But again, the, 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 the segment is under accumulation, and you can be buying some of these, especially if the economic data continues to be strong. Um, to wrap it up with a couple more questions pretty soon, where would I put new money? Right over here, I, the technology sector, as you can see, broke out the new 52 week highs. Uh, uh, it looks bullish. Look at the uh, up-down ratio. This is this isn't retail clients going in here buying uh, technology. This is a big move from hedge funds and mutual funds that they're they're loading the loading the guns with tech tech stocks right now, and that's it's probably where you want to be. The RSI, the 14-day, is also confirming it, 
And here's the relative strength down here. This is probably the leading sector of the market right at this time. We, should, we also looked at the Philadelphia Semiconductors, which also proves uh, uh, that, that the breakout of the tech is real. You can be buying semiconductors in there. Now, the financial sector is also real close to making a breakout. You have the ascending trend line in here. and You've had a pretty nice move over the last couple of weeks. My problem with this is I don't know how, how much money they're going to be able to make uh, you know, with, with, with rates this low. As rates go up, that's better for the financials. But you don't see the accumulation that you see in uh, some of the other sectors here. You have a nice little uh, bounce up here, which is good. But the relative strength, you're still just barely a, a market performer uh, even in this. So financial sectors on pullbacks, I think you can add the positions, not for quick trades, probably for longer-term holds. But I don't see a lot of big upside in the financials until the uh, rates start to go up. Here's again, that's the financial uh, sector there. Another area that I like is just in the process of breaking out uh, almost a new 52-week high would be the consumer discretionary sector. Um, this seems to be a little bit more, uh, there's pockets of strength. Last week, I know uh, retailers' apparel was one of the strongest industry groups. Um, but at a discount, uh, things like that uh, at five below or something is a pretty good one. The dollar generals look good. Uh, the discount uh, areas, you know, the Costco's and all, and also uh, the specialty retailers where you get the Home Depots, at Alta Salons, things like that would be uh, stocks that seem to be doing better. Uh, you're seeing accumulation down here. Uh, again, uh, outperforming the broader market, and the RSI is uh, also uh, confirming that. So you know, I, I, that's, that kind of wraps it up. I hope you got something out of that. We're going to answer a couple of questions next week. We're going to look at the consumer discretion sector, the technology sector, those two especially, and, and see if we can uh, find the top, uh, the, the top relative strength stocks in those two sectors that you could probably still be putting money into. That's where I think new money should be going um, in this sector and probably into the health care. Other than that, uh, you know, we'll find some backing and filling to go. Uh, the CT, one caution is the CTI uh, goes to a sell on the market uh, sometime in, in August. My thoughts on that, that means that we probably will have a weaker period in the market, but that could just be some sideways action. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we're going to have a 10% you know, correction. But I can't imagine getting through this uh, whole crazy election without some, some bumps in the road uh, on the market as, as things come out with, uh, with some of their announcements. So I'm going to go ahead and close this down, and we'll look at some of the charts and try to see uh, get to some of these questions. Can you see that, Will? Right now. Okay. Uh, bum, bum. Okay, I read uh, the book, Great Info, when it mentioned conflicting, which ones do you usually believe, which indicators you trust the most? Um, if, you, if you get a chance to go back on here, again, uh, to me the leading indicators are uh, the advanced decline line and also the uh, expansion in the new 52-week highs and lows and the number of stocks that are participating that are within 1% of their new highs. And I try to mention that in the, in the Friday weekly market letter because those are leading indicators. Those are what's going on right now. You, you have other technical indicators that can show negative divergence. They're, they're more helpful in that. But uh, when, you, when you start seeing the, the, the advanced decline line going up and then starting to roll over, that, that can roll over you know, six weeks or so before the market tops out because the momentum will carry on. You've got people coming in but you're, they don't realize that they're in a distribution phase uh, as the market's making a new high. Um, okay, your CTI, momentum index, strength index, and second opinion. Um, CTI, is a, is a, remember, is a forecasting model that we use that uh, points to, uh, it, it kind of forecasts where we think the market's going. The, the second opinion is a, uh, a, a trend following model. And one of the ways that uh, like I, I we always get someone to say, well, I bought, you, went, you upgraded a stock to a buy on the second opinion, and then it, and it immediately turned down. But what happens, what happens occasionally is, is you want to check that, the relative strength of the second opinion, because uh, if, if the, if sometimes when you have a stock that, or index that runs up into resistance, uh, a trend following model will, will say, okay, we're going to break out and move to new highs. Well, if the resistance holds, it rolls over, and the, and the second opinion can, can be wrong on that. So you want to uh, validate uh, the, the, the breakout with a relative strength on, on the second opinion. Okay, if you have time, where do we buy Guild? And 
Is that showing that? Oh, let me let me uh, hold on one second here. Close that. Oh, I'm going to share the file. Hold on. Okay, this, can you see it now? Okay. All right, GILD is one of the biotechs. Uh, uh, I don't see any issues in distribution. Uh, it's underperforming the market. Uh, this move here was confirmed, but at the 14 day, a little bit overbought. Uh, if this would pull back down here around the 83 and then begin to come back up, what's interesting about this is you, you could see a. Uh, Possible starting to form a, a reverse head and shoulders. That if, it, if that head, if that would break a head and shoulders, if it comes down here and then breaks above this 87.50, you could get a measured move up to around 96, 97 area, which would be nice. You also have this uh, trend line coming down here, which is which would be about where the uh, reverse head and shoulders would top out. So if you get a pull back here, this this 84 area or so, and then you get a move back up above the the, the neckline of this. Uh, you, you could get a nice trade up in here to this anywhere from 94 today to where the 200 is up to about 97. But I don't see much accumulation. That would, uh, you know, let's see this thing get. I, I would buy buy it on a pullback only at this this stage. Okay. Any other any other questions coming in? And again, next week what I hope to do is, is is to have a list of stocks that we'll look at on the chart. Uh, in, in some of the sectors that, we, that I think are going to lead lead us higher, like the uh, the kind of healthcare and the tech, and uh, maybe some of the materials and and the consumer discretionary. Okay, well, I've gone about 35 minutes, so I will go ahead and shut this off. Uh, the re this recording will be up in about uh, an hour on the markets page. Uh, if you're new, we leave it up there all week long, so you can go over some of the stuff that we talked about. And if you have any questions for next week. You can send your uh, questions or stocks you want us to look at to uh, dblake at marketedge.com or the doc at marketedge.com. I appreciate you uh, taking some time out of your busy day to join me, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week.